truth of the word is that when the enemy has pressed in hard, that you shall not be afraid because the battle belongs to the Lord. He continues to tell us, take courage because our redemption is near. It is nearer than the first time when we believed. It is nearer than when we first believed, isn't it? He says, the battle belongs to the Lord. Now, in the course of life, many battles are going to come. None of us knows what the year has in store for us. The only sure thing that we have is that God is going to go with us to the very end. Many times when I think of finishing, I'm not just thinking about finishing the year. Well, that could be it. Finishing the year and finishing well is a good thing. But when we talk about finishing for you and me as a Christian, we are looking at the very end when it is done, when it is time for me to go home because that time is coming. Hello? For you and me as a Christian, we need to know there is a day that is coming and we will go home. If the Lord tarries and my time on this face of the earth comes, expires, I shall go home. Now, how do I finish? How, how do I get to the end? And every time I think about finishing, I, I, I like to think about, um, I don't know whether this is right to say in church, those of us who love to watch movies. And your movies are action movies. I know that is not a good thing. But anyhow, sometimes you, you watch those uh, uh, war movies and you're seeing a people that were at war. And many times the picture I see of finishing, you, you finish. But some of the things that you see when people are finishing, the battle has been done. People have fought. And then... They, they, just before we come to the end of the movie, there's just some truck or some vehicle that comes from some place. It is coming, it is smoking from every corner. Okay, I know you don't watch those things. For those of us who watch those things, have you seen that? Kigari tuki natokea na huko kimebondeka every side because it has been hit right, left and center. And it is, eh, mabati natetemeka hivi, but it is, it has finished. <laughs> It is coming like, and the guys who are inside, they are all bloody. Some of them don't even know whether they are going home or wherever they are being taken, but they are there. <laughs> they are holding their weapons. They didn't give up. They made it. And finally, when they get to, and for some reason, there are people who will just be waiting for the ones that have gone to war to receive them. You know, ambulances and everything are around. They pick them, they take them to, <laughs> to be taken care of. And, and you know, I see the picture of finishing, and that is what I see. I don't think we have to finish that way. But if it demands that we finish, then let us finish. When war begins, we have troops and troops of men and women armed to the teeth who go to war. But when we are finishing, you see a few coming home. We have had casualties. Lives have been lost, but the battle is won. The enemy is annihilated. Brothers and sisters, we have to finish. And if we have to finish that way, <laughs> then <laughs> let it be that we finished and we finished uh, and we, we, we came back home. And so the scripture that we have, which uh, forms the basis of our sharing this um, Entire year, the word that we received is coming from the book of Isaiah chapter number 41. We're going to read 41, uh, Isaiah 41 from verse 14 to 16. And then we'll just pick a few things that, that speaks to me. And uh, then we will uh, we'll prepare for this year. Now the scripture that we are just about to read, of course the, the writer is prophet Isaiah and we all know. And, and prophet Isaiah prophesies many, many years uh, before some of these things come to happen. He says in um, verse number 14 of chapter 41, it says, fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. Now, just right there, it, it talks about Jacob. It talks about you warm Jacob and then talks about you men of Israel. Of, of course, we remember that Jacob becomes Israel uh, later when he has met the Lord. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Verse number 15 says, Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. 
you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make them uh, and make the hills like chaff. It says in verse number 16, uh, you shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away, and the wild wind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Now, the book of Isaiah, or the prophet Isaiah, if you'd want, referred to many uh, uh, of the Bible scholars as uh, the weeping prophet or the preaching prophet, has 66 books. And some of us would say that this is another Bible. You know, Isaiah himself has 66 chapters. And the entire Bible has 66 books. And the first couple of uh, chapters of Isaiah, uh, from chapter number 1 through to chapter 39, you will find a lot of the things that Isaiah is talking about here are about judgments, about nations that were against the people of God and what their end was to become. He prophesies about the people of Israel themselves when they have departed from the Lord. And it's like you're going through a, a series of very tough things that are happening. But we come to verse number 40. And verse number 40 starts, if you'd want, with very, very encouraging words. It says, verse number 40 of Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 1. It says, comfort, yes, comfort my people. Even before we get to verse 41, where God is promising us help, and where God is preparing us and, and making us threshers of mountains, verse number 40 through to the very end, it speaks about you and me, the people of God, and how God is going to walk with us and how God is going to help us until we come to the very end. And so verse number 40 starts by saying, comfort, yes, comfort um, my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, before we get into, um, into just looking at the, the, the that uh, we're looking at this year, I want to come back to Isaiah chapter number 1. So that you know the people that God is talking about and what kind of a people they are. So if you give us Isaiah chapter number 41, uh, chapter number 1, as Isaiah comes to prophesy, these are the kind of people, God's people, the people of God. It says in verse number one of uh, chapter number one, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now, just naming the people that uh, within um, the prophecy of Isaiah, the people that they are served or prophesied when they were reigning. It says, wickedness of Judah. Now, remember these are God's people, and this is what Isaiah says to people of God, hear, O heavens, and give, me, uh, give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. And the Lord has spoken, and this is what the Lord says. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey, its master, is master scrib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Verse number four. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evil doers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. Verse 5. Why should you be stricken again? Just suggesting that they have been stricken a couple of times. And God is asking, why should you be stricken again? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. Verse number six, from the sole of the foot, describing the state of this people of God, from the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and breezes 
putrefying souls. They have not been closed or bound up or soothed with ointment. Verse number seven says, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Strangers devour land in your presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion is left as both in a vineyard, as a heart in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Now God speaks to them and says, were it not for God's mercy, they would have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. But in verse number 10 says, hear the word of the Lord. Now speaks to them and addresses them as Sodom and, and Gomorrah. It says, um, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. He says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Now, friends, notice that these people are very religious. They are sacrificing to God. Yet from verse number one up to verse number 10, God is saying how uh, deplorable they are in, because of what they have allowed themselves to go into. He says, now, your sacrifices, a multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord, I have had enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. It says, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure iniquity and sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my, my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We can read on and on and on the prophecy of Isaiah to the people of God, the people that God is saying, these are my people. I brought them into being. I, am, I, am, I want to showcase myself through their lives. And he talks all that concerning them. In that picture of the people of Israel, is the state that we find ourselves in today. Everything and anything goes today. Realize that he's not talking to people who do not know God. He's talking to the people of God that have decided to live the way they want. In their functions, in their gatherings, in their convocations, in their festivities. In fact, in their services. As they congregate and they lift up their hands to worship. God is saying, I am tired of seeing this kind of a thing. But thank God that we have chapter number 40. The same, same people that God is talking about through his prophet. Then we get to chapter number 40 and he says, comfort to my people. I want to submit to us that God has not forsaken us. 
And, and, and I know we could be here and some of us, you have gone through everything and anything. And some of us, it's not because of what we did, but just things happened and we found ourselves in situations. But some of us could be because of the kind of life that you have chosen to live. And you know, you are far removed from God. God is saying, verse number 20 of chapter number one, that, uh, the one that we just uh, finished with, that if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, that becomes the condition of the people of God, or that is the situation that the people of God are in, and we go through the prophecy of Isaiah, and then we come to verse number, uh, chapter number 40, where we see God comforting his people. And then, of course, chapter number 41 follows, where now we are getting the people of God being prepared because there is work for them to do. In chapter number 41, where we are getting uh, the theme of, our, uh, of the year, this is what it says. And we just read. If, if you'd back it up and, and, and start from verse number one, it says, Keep silence before me, O coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. Now, God is inviting the people. He says he's silencing the people of the coastlands. He's telling them, come, because something is about to happen. Who raised up? And he's asking these questions to these people. Who raised up one from the east who in righteousness called him to his feet? Who gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings? Who gave them as dust to his sword, as driven stable to his bow? And, and God paints a picture of somebody that he has helped. Somebody that if we, if we interrogated the scriptures, maybe we will get to understand who God is talking about. And he says about this person, you who are talking about my people, you people of the coastlands, you people who neighbor my people, I want to invite you to come. Because you have no say on my people. These are my people, and I want to comfort them. And he says, do you know who raised that man from the east? Now, the man from the east, we, we will get to know someday. And he says, who in righteousness called him to his feet. In righteousness, God called him to his feet, meaning he was a nobody. He couldn't even stand. He didn't have shape, or, and God made him stand. Now, that man from the east... God says, who gave the nations before him? And of course, God is asking questions that he doesn't expect answers. But the questions are for you and me to ponder. Who did all that? We continue in verse number three and, and, and he says, who pursued them and passed safely by the way that he had not gone with his feet? Places that this person had not gone before and God pursued God caused them to overcome. Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? He says, I, the Lord, am the first. And with the last, I am he. He says, it is me, the Lord, who has done this. Verse number five continues to address the coastlands. He says, the coastlands saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. They drew near and came. Everyone helped his neighbor and said to his brother, be of good courage. So the craftsman encouraged the goldsmith. He who smooths with the hammer inspired him who strikes the anvil, saying, it is ready for the soldering. He fastened it with pegs that it might not totter. So they, they come to a place where these people um, of the coastlands have created gods. They have made gods. They are encouraging each other with the gifts that God has given them to make gods. But he says to his people, but you, Israel, are my servant. You can't be like them. You can't bring what I have given you and create gods like the people of the coastlands. He says, but you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. And that could be the man from the east, the man that God called, the man that God says is his friend. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. 
I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It says in verse number 11, Behold all those who are incensed against you, people who are against you, my people, shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. And that is the Lord who is saying. So even before we come to the threshing of the mountains, judgment has been passed against the people who are against God's people. It says in verse number 12, You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who are who war against you shall be as nothing, as non-existent nothing or thing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold you, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. It says in verse number 14, where we are getting a, a, a word for the year. Fear not, you warm, Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Now, that is very encouraging for me to hear. That God is saying, I will help you. Me who is worthless, me who is not able to do anything, me who is, Scripture says, you warm, says you who is helpless, you who lives in the dust of the earth, he says, I will help you. It is out of his sovereignty that God decides to help this worm. It is out of God's sovereignty that he decides to help you and me who are helpless without God. And he says, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. It says in verse number 15, Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. Verse number 16 says, you shall winnow them. After you have threshed them, after you have beaten them, now that you have been sharpened, now that you have been made ready, after you have beaten and threshed the mountains, whatever mountains they shall be, it says, verse number 16, you shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. And that's the word of the Lord for this year. Now we ask ourselves, now when God is saying that we will thresh the mountains, what exactly does it mean? Now for those that are coming from places where um, you went to the farm, you know there were different seasons for farming. The season that people are going into right now, where I, have, I, where I come from, where I have come from, where I came from. Okay. We used to call it the season of Jibo. <laughs> you know, Jibo is plowing with a jembe. And it used to be very hot. I don't know what has happened because this January is not the January that we used to know. This is a new January. It's a pimped January. <laughs> January in Nanyesha. The January is that we knew we had scorching sun. And this is the time we went to the farm. <laughs> Especially if you had cleared school. And you are waiting for placement either to go to college or you are going to, uh, to the next level. During this time, it was time to go and work in the fields. And for some reason, the ground was so hard, so hot, and after people have harvested the maize and other things, they, they, didn't, they didn't take care of everything that needed to be removed from the, from the farm. There were stumps of maize that remained a foot high. I don't know whether that is what used to happen in your place. And as you went through digging, they would hurt you, they would prick you, and it was not enjoyable. But thank God, that was a season. There was a season of threshing. Now, threshing simply means if you had maize, of course you had maize because when you are digging, when you are jib boring, 
it's because they had harvested maize hiyo maize ilikuwa tu mahali imekaa inangojea siku siku ya <laughs> and you would call people and you would have sticks to beat the maize tulikuwa tunapiga ni eh and beans a heap of beans that was uprooted from the farm kimlima kiko hivi na mko watu watatu unaambiwa hii ni yenu now threshing means work hey people of god we could be excited god is going to help us yes amen but god says i have sharpened you you're going to thresh <laughs> you would thresh that mountain of beans until it was leveled to the ground because you're looking for the the seed and you are not going to get out of there until it is done now after you have threshed and threshed you know if you found people i, I wish we had uh, <laughs> we had that, that image of people threshing and see and you would be wondering why are you beating these things and they are not harmful and they they beat them with all their energy and they are there hours on end until that heap goes down work has not even started after that <laughs> say verse number 16 we know we you go back to that mountain that you have beaten pick it and put it in a in a gitaruru <laughs> and you start winnowing you know the, the beginning is much easier because you just you just scoop and then <laughs> i remember those days oh god is great <laughs> just scoop but as you get to the place where you need to serve this bean as food then it becomes even more serious winnowing so brothers and sisters we have come into this year and god is saying to us so that we just think straight to see kwetu tunasema hey the year of threshing and uh, it is work and we have said we are going to finish and finish strong we are not going to give up not in the beating of the mountain or the threshing not in the winnowing you know when when i see this and 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 finally we get to the place where god says that when you winnow these mountains whatever mountains and your mountains could be different from my mountains the things that you're going to come across this year your challenges will be different from mine oh i know that for sure even right now the issue that you're you're, you're fighting with this the situation that you are in is different from mine can i tell you mine okay we'll meet so that we share you tell me yours i tell you mine because right now if i tell you mine <laughs> I don't have the opportunity to hear yours. But some of us seated here, your mountain that is appearing before you and you cannot see the other side is school fees. <laughs> and you know your mountain could be a blessing to somebody else. The head teachers who are here. <laughs> they're saying, "Please, this mountain, give it to them. It is yours. Deal with it." When you get to the principal, the principal will not look at the mountain. They are looking at how many of you have come and you have cleared your school fees. They don't even think it's a mountain. Well, and you know na mlima. But we are saying this year it is a year for us to get into the work. And that's just one area of our lives. Those are just the mountains that you and I are going to come through every other day. In the spiritual scripture tells us that we have come and god has prepared us he has sharpened us we have become a new instrument in the hands of god but scripture says that we do not war against flesh and blood for you and me as a christian the battles that we are going to fight in our spiritual front we will not fight them carnally second corinthians chapter number 10 tells us 
if you give us uh, Second Corinthians chapter number 10. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, that is for you and for me. The weapons that we need are not those that men will see. They are spiritual. They are given by God to those that have subjected themselves to him. Those that have yielded themselves to him. Those that have said no to the pleasures of this world. Those that have said it is no longer I who lives but Christ in me. Otherwise, if we do not get those weapons, when everybody else will be coming back home celebrating, you know the example I gave of those guys who finish? That is the way you're going to come. Thank God you will come anyhow. But none of us wants to come in that shape. You come back to your family and you're beaten right, left, and center. They look at you and they're asking, will he become a human being? Why? It's because we refuse to receive. Because the battle, we have said, the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. The weapons that we will need to use are not physical. They are not carnal. They are not, they are not the weapons that the people out there are using. They are, they are weapons that God has given us. Scripture says that our weapons are, 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 on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, demolishing strongholds, it doesn't require you to roll. It doesn't require you to, to have things. You just need to believe God for who he is and the faith that you have come into. You will demolish strongholds. There is no formula. The formula is believe in God. The faith that you have come into, in it, there is a provision for your armory, for your arsenal, to demolish strongholds. Arguments, and some of us are good at arguments. We win the arguments, we lose the people. The call this morning is that those people that have those kind of arguments and they will argue about everything and anything, our weapons are not, it's not the mouth. It's not how loud we can speak. It's not how much we can demean them. It's not winning the argument. Our weapons are in God. And so we will demolish those arguments. And every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, how do we do that? Because God has given it to us. He says this is the way to do it. And if you read that uh, portion of scripture from uh, verse, uh, verse number 1 to um, Second Corinthians chapter uh, number 10. Just go and read the whole of it and see how Paul is arguing out his case. You will realize that yes, this is a work of God. Now, when you're told to take captive, take captive of every thought, you're like, how do you do this? But do you know there are people who have methods and, and, and ways of taking captive of people's thoughts? That is not what we're being called to do. Ours is godly. The weapon of taking those captives, uh, those, those thoughts captive is of God. And so, friends, a couple of things that... Um, I need us to know as we go into the year is that we are alive today. God has allowed us to get into the year 2024 because he's not yet done with us. Ah, those of us that have come into the year 2024, I, I dare say that God has an assignment for you. It might not be clear, but it is there. God wouldn't have just allowed us to come in to fill the numbers. We know we have friends and loved ones who have passed on in the year 2023. And some are not even sick. Well, even if they were sick, it, we have known it is not sickness that takes us away. It is when our time has expired, when we are done with our assignment, we will go. Your assignment is still on. Tell your neighbor your assignment is on. That's why you are here today. Now, if you know that your assignment is on, please do it. Do your assignment. 
<laughs> yesterday seated somewhere, we, was, yesterday by the way we had the graduation, national graduation of the ropers in the entire country. We were at All Saints. And seated somewhere, one of the, one of the uh, facilities as in we were talking said that when they were in school, in high school, there was just this one day that, uh, and our time is up, this one day that the mother, you know the way kids go for, um, for break, for holiday, and you have a whole month. Those are the days when people used to go for holiday, not, not nowadays. Nowadays, on a hippie, on a route. That time we used to go for holiday. So they have gone for holiday, and all that this person has been doing the entire time is just going out, hanging out with friends, having fun, going to, including coming to church and coming for activities for young people. And then this one um, evening, just before the schools open, something just happens to the mother. You know the way things happen to mothers? Says, Ebuleta kitabu yako. Simu kitoka muna payango assignment. Eh, nazina andikwa. You know, during our days, there were no written assignments. That how, that's how school was. It was beautiful. And nowadays, muna andiki yango. All that they need to do, every subject, assignment. And it is passed on together with the report form. During our days, we were told, just go read. Read something, just <laughs> thank God <laughs> we survived. <laughs> so this is that one day, and the mother says, you have been busy all over schools. And you are going in the next two days. Let me see you are, oh, looking at the assignment sheet. You me fanya. No, you me fanya. No, you me fanya. So what is wrong with you? What part of this assignment didn't you understand? And in two days, you're going back to school. Sasta mimi niende nikaitwe na mwalimu juu yako. Ah, it shall not happen. Now, you have an assignment that is God-given. <laughs> the good thing is that none of us is being going to be called because of you. You will deal with God. Do your assignment. That's why we are in the year 2024. God has promised, and we see that in verse number uh, 15. He says, God has promised to help us. Behold, I'll make you, and this is the way God is helping us, making us into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. This, like I said, is a call to work. God is going to help you. God has promised to do that. The truth of the matter is one of the other things that is coming out of this uh, portion of scripture that uh, takes us through the ear is that after we have threshed the mountains and we said, when we winnow the mountains that have been threshed, they are blown by the wind and they become chaff. I am not sure you are able to reconstruct what was blown by the wind when you are winnowing to the original state. That means some of the things that we are struggling with, some of the mountains that we'll find along the way, it doesn't have to be things that we are struggling with. It could just be breakthroughs that we're going to get in the course of this year as we trust God. And it is your case. It is you as an individual. Some of those things will come to an end forever. You deal with it, it shall not come back again. Because God has said it. And of course, uh, the other thing that God is saying is that we need not to fear. He says, fear not. Fear not. He says, fear not, you warm, you helpless, you ordinary human beings, you earthly people. It is me who gives you strength to do everything that, but he says, fear not. Even in that state, fear not. And, 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 and he says, fear not, Jacob. He says again in the same verse, fear not, men of Israel. It is not just for us as individuals, it is also for us as a nation. There are things that we have prayed, and we just prayed about our country, and we have said things are not working right. It is time for us to tile up and fear not, because God is going to work through for us. Not just for us as individuals, but even for our country. I'll help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. It means that our help is coming from the Lord the hope is not just for me as a human being, as a man. It is for us as a people of God. It is for us as a church. What are our mountains as a congregation? What are our mountains as, as a people? What are our mountains as a fellowship? What are our mountains as, as a ministry? Ladies, men, children, name it. What is our mountain 
as a people of this country. God is going to help us. And that is what God is saying to us this year. So we go into the year. God is on our side. He's not against us. He's not setting us up. God is going to help us. Amen. So fear not. The battle belongs to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and to honor you that you have promised to help us. You have promised to comfort us. We are your people. We might have fallen short of the standards of God, but you have come through for us, reminding us that it is you that has given us the ability to do everything that we have done. We pray that in the name of Jesus, that you have brought us into this year, the assignment that you have in store for us, for each one of us as individuals, for this congregation, for this nation, for we want to do it and do it well. We have the confidence that you're going to help us. We want to thank you. We want to honor you. Father, we know that it is you that makes things happen. And so this morning we yield ourselves to you. We submit ourselves to you. We surrender to your will and to your way. We ask that you'd have the preeminence. As we bow our heads, the Lord has promised to help us. I know you could be here and you're saying, my issue, it has bothered me over and over. I am fearful. I do not know what to do. The Lord has promised to help us. If you lift up your hand as a sign of surrender to the Lord, saying you're surrendering to him, whatever situation it is, we just say a prayer together and believe God for your situation. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into this place where we know that we have situations. Even when we hear the word that you're going to help us, we lapse into moments of looking at the issues that we are facing and we get scared some of them because they are right here with us some of them because they are what we are feeling in our bodies it could be situations of health i pray that in the name of jesus you that changes not you who is who was and is to come that in your own miraculous way that you will come through and especially for those that could be in our midst who are sick in their bodies you have healed in the past we are witnesses of what you're able to do do it for these dear ones in the name of jesus and some of them could be because they have been served with letters they have been served with divorce letters some is because they have been summoned in court the case is in court we know that you are well able to intervene in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the name of the Lord, that if there be that kind of a person in our midst who is crying out to you, who feels like things are caving in, Father, in the name of Jesus, come through for them in the name of the Lord. Some could be, dear Lord, because of relationships that have gone wrong, they have gone south. I pray that in the name of Jesus, oh, you who is, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, remember your people. We are the people that you have helped. We are the people that you have made. We are your people. We ask for that help of God that he has promised. Because he is not a man that he should lie, we remain expectant. We receive that help. And we know that the manifestation of the same is coming. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray.